Hey, hey, Mr. War here at your service, and woohoo! Look at what we have here, my friends. We have ourselves a feature animal of the day, and look at this guy. It's a hippopotamus. My goodness, that is one big dude. <laughs> yeah, I say, we're here with another mad video. You liking the, the bumper music in the back? <clears throat> Man, move, right? Very, very nice. It's something new. But hey, we could talk about this all day, but you know what? I do have a job to do, and that means I need to go ahead and get into the math video. So let's go ahead and do that. I need to shrink this guy down, though. You're uh, so big that I need to turn you into something smaller, like a mini, a mini hippo. There you go. <laughs> all right, get you out of the way. Anywho, we are doing chapter 10 review and test. Let's go ahead and look at that first problem here. It says the library is five miles from the post office. How many yards is the library from the post office? It's so short. It seemed like it would be so easy, right? Well, maybe not so, because we are talking about English units. The ones that we use here, I guess we use here in the United States. And they can tend to be confusing, because we've already learned a lot about the metric system. And the metric system, I'm going to tell you, it's wonderful, my friends. It's wonderful because everything's based on a power of 10, right? For example, if we have one meter, we know that a meter is a unit for distance in the metric system. And one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. And... What makes it so nice is both of these units of measure are units of distance. But centimeters are smaller. We need 100 of them to equal that one meter. So everything's based on that. We can go from a meter to a centimeter real easy by multiplying or dividing by 100. I love that. Don't you love that? I mean, that's awesome. The only problem is, is if you've lived in the United States, metric system doesn't make a lot of sense for us conceptually in our mind how much that is. But let's go ahead and look at what the unit of the measure is here. So what we're faced with here is we have five miles from the post office. And so there happens to be, I believe, 1,760 yards in one mile. What an odd number, right? And so we need to go from a here in this case a larger unit because miles one mile is more than one yard and I always like to remember I remember this in grade school an easy way to remember where am I going to be multiplying or dividing this number am I gonna be multiplying or dividing 1760 well an easy way for me to remember is is if you're gonna be going from a larger unit to a smaller unit it's almost like you need more of that smaller unit right to make up because if it takes so many yards just to make one mile that means one mile is a larger unit so if you want to kind of remember it this way I think of this way when we go from larger to smaller then we are going to be multiplying but if we go from smaller to larger then we're going to divide Okay, so we are going to be going from larger to smaller. So let's go ahead and multiply 1,760 by 5. We have 0. We multiply the 5 and the 0 first. Now we're going to go into the next column. That's 30. Carry our 3. 35 plus 3 is 38. Carry my 3 from the 38. And then 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 is 8. So I end up with 8,800 yards. All right, let's go ahead and kind of keep on moving down then. It says, Billy made three gallons of juice for a picnic. He said that he made three quarter quarts of juice. Explain Billy's mistake. Well, I'm looking at that one and, okay, how did he do that? Let's see, three quarter quart. Oh, you know, I think what he did was here, obviously, three gallons is more than three quarts. It looks like he may have actually divided by four because there are four quarts in one gallon that looks like what what he did there so he took his three gallons and multiplied by by four and got three fourths and that would make sense because there's four quarts in one one gallon so that's probably where he made his mistake so i'm going to say billy divided the number of gallons by four to uh, convert into quarts 
uh, he should have actually multiplied the number of gallons by four. And again, this goes to our example because we're going from larger to smaller. We're going from gallon is a larger unit than quart. Therefore, we need to multiply. Okay, so there we have our explanation for that particular problem. Anyway, number three it says the drama club is showing a video of their recent play. The first showing begins at 2.30 p.m. The second showing is scheduled at 5.25 p.m. with a half hour break between the showings. Okay, part A, how long is the video in hours and minutes? Okay, nice. Well, I'm looking at this problem, I'm thinking we're dealing with a clock. What better thing to have but a clock? Oh, where, oh, where could a clock be? Well, thank you there, Mr. Clock. Now, referring back to the problem, it says that the showing begins at 2.30. I'm going to go ahead and set the clock. That looks like going to be about 2.30. Now, I think on this problem, I think I would solve this problem. I have it set for 2.30, but, you know, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work backwards on this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and it says that the second showing is scheduled at 5.25 p.m. So thinking backwards, I need to take a half hour off because that one half hour break between the two showings. So here's 525, here's 515 p.m. So I'm going to move all the way one half hour, okay, 30 minutes. That's going to move that to coming up on 455. So now I can find the elapsed time from 230 to 455. And since I wrote my 455 p.m., I'm going to keep that here. Now I'm going to move my clock back to 230. Now I have 230. So I remove this. Minute hand, 2.30, here's 3.30. So I made one complete rotation. Okay, so now that's one hour. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a second hour. I'm gonna go to 4.30. And then you get to 4.55, which is this distance here. It's gonna travel from here all the way up to my 4.55, which is right by the 11. And that, is 25 minutes. Therefore, how long is the video in hours and minutes? Two hours and 25 minutes. Now explain how you can use a number line to find the answer. Okay, so I wrote my explanation how I could kind of like use a number line. I actually used the clock. I don't know if that qualifies for the answer, but it is a strategy. It was a strategy that I thought made the most sense. So let's move on to the next problem here, part C, yeah. The second showing started 20 minutes late. Oh no. Will the second showing be over by 7.45 p.m.? Explain why your answer is reasonable. Well, it says that the start of the second showing was at 5.25 p.m. So if that show starts at 5.25 p.m. and now we're talking that it's gonna be 20 minutes later, well, that would be 5.45 p.m. And 5.45 p.m., if I add on two hours, 6.45, 7.45, by just doing that, I can see that the second showing will not, um, will not be able to finish on time or it will not end Okay, by 7.45 p.m. So, yes, my answer is no. Uh, the second showing you know, would start at 5.45 p.m., yeah, by doing that, you know, the movie lasts two hours and 25 minutes, so uh, it'll end much later. In fact, it'll end at 8, 810, which is later than the 7.45 p.m. So let me go ahead and write those notes down. Cool! Let's go to the next page. Yeah! Now here it says Fred bought four liters of liquid laundry detergent. All right, two, I'm sorry, 3,250 milliliters of fabric softener and 2.5 liters of bleach. For numbers 4A through 4E, select true or false for each statement. So 4A says Fred bought 75 milliliters more fabric softener than bleach. Well, look at the fabric softener. We have 3,250. Of course, the bleach though is in liters not milliliters. And again, we talked about this before, how great it is that 
the metric system makes it so easy to convert. Now we know that there's 1000 milliliters in one liter. So we can convert 2.5 liters into milliliters by simply multiplying by 1000. Again, we're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit. We're going to end up with moving the decimal places of uh, decimal place three times. So we're going to end up with 2500. Zero, zero. If you notice, that's moved one, two, three places. So we end up with 2500 milliliters. And now we can compare them. Well, we have 3,250 milliliters. If we were to subtract 2,500, we end up with 750. And again, we were using the unit of measure of milliliters. So in this case, no, Mr. Warwick cannot approve this one. This is false because this is 75. So yeah, it's just 10 times too great. 4B says Fred bought 1.75 liters more laundry detergent than bleach. Well, the laundry detergent was four liters. Now we can actually make a comparison with liters because we have four liters and we have 2.5 liters of bleach. The difference between four liters and 2.5 liters is a liter and a half. And this saying here, 1.75 liters. No, that's not true. False. All right. And 4C says Fred bought 750 milliliters more fabric softener than bleach. Well, isn't that the similar problem that we had up here? Aren't these two similar except for a power of 10? It appears to be so. And we already figured that one out, and that is true. Now, Fred bought 150 milliliters more laundry detergent than bleach. So, again, here we're going to 100, where you, the unit of measure is milliliters for the laundry detergent. We're comparing with the bleach. The bleach we already determined to be 2,500 milliliters. Well, if it's say 150 milliliters more of the laundry detergent than bleach, we could add 150 onto our 2,500. You can probably do this in your head because if you put it simply, just put 150, see like so, you can see that's going to be 2,650. And is that true? No, that's not true. All right, Fred bought 150 milliliters more. No, because we need to get up to 4,000 milliliters then, so that is not true. And now we have Fred bought 75 hundredths liter, 0.75 liters, uh, more laundry detergent than fabric softener. Is that true? When we look at that 2,500, it's, oh, I'm sorry, we're looking at, and fabric softener, sorry. Fabric softener is 3,250. We had that up here. And if we were to convert 0.75 and, and multiply by that one, 1,000, three decimal places means it's going to be 750. So it says Fred bought 750 milliliters more detergent than fabric softener. Well, now, fabric softener, remember, was 3,250, all right? And laundry detergent was 4 liters, which is the same as 4,000 milliliters. Now we look at 750. Yeah, I'm hoping you can just see that by looking, all right? 350, 450, you can see the 250, 500, 750. Yeah, that's going to be absolutely true. And you could actually subtract that, and you would get your 750. Let's come down. Whoa, fella. Looks like you came back and it looks like it grew up, huh? I made you a mini hippo and look at you now. Whoa. And look at the problem. What a coincidence, huh? Do you think Mr. Wara did that on purpose? Hmm, wonder. A male hippopotamus can weigh up to 10,000 pounds. How many tons is 10,000 pounds? I don't know, but I know one thing. You're definitely big and we need to get you shrinking again. Oh my goodness, you're like blocking my page again. All right, we'll move you over there. Well, the conversion on this one, again, not a lot of fun because these are those English conversions that we have to memorize. One thing we do know is we know that pounds is a smaller unit okay, than tons. All right? And when we're going from smaller to larger, we're going to need to divide. The question is by how much? And the conversion for pounds to tons happens to be 2,000. All right, I've memorized these, I suppose, through the years. So then we need to take 10,000 then and divide that by 2,000. So there's 2,000 pounds in one ton, one ton. We're going to need to take that 10,000 pounds and divide that by 2,000. Well, I don't think we really need to set up this problem, do we? Yeah, I mean, 10,000 and 2,000, we have three powers of 10 for both. 
So it's just like saying 10 divided by 2. Therefore, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now it says Amar and his friend went to a movie at 4.45 p.m. The movie ended at 6.20 p.m. How long was the movie? Okay, so another clock question here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and draw my own quick little clock here. Because 4.45 on the analog clock lets me know that my hour hand's pretty close to the 4, which is around here. And then 45 is over here. So this is actually the 9 that's here, the 6, the 3, and the 12. So 445 just means I'm going to be going around one time, right? Be 545. And 545 gets me here, but I got to get to 620. That's another 15 minutes here from 9 to 12. That would give me 6 o'clock. So right there, now I have one hour and 15 minutes. And now I have a 20 more minutes. So I'll add on to here. And I have 35. So my answer then should be one hour and 35 minutes. Now Mark got home 45 minutes after the movie ended. What time did Mark get home? Explain how you found your answer. The movie got over at 7.20 p.m. Now we're talking 45 minutes later. Now interestingly, 45 minutes here almost it's 40 minutes from 6 20 to 7 o'clock so 45 minutes means it's going to be 7 05 so what am i basically doing i'm i just need to for, find 45 minutes later right 45 minutes after 6 20 so when i count from 6 20 to 7 o'clock i get 40 minutes and then i'm just adding the five on the end so let me go ahead and write those notes Okay, well, I know you've been hearing that wonderful music there in the background. Woohoo! Yeah. Well, that means the video is coming to an end. There you can see my notes for part B from question number six. Yes, very fun converting all these units. Now, my friends, live long and prosper.